think we're going to start. I'm going to be playing on a controller because I sure hope it works. Nice. And here we go. We're going to play my game. Oh, man. Please work. <laughs> hey, we got a window. Ooh. Nice. Okay, I need to go down to configure. Uh, controls. Wow, look at this. Joystick zero, joystick one. All right. Oh, I gotta click on each one? Ah, uh, that's bad game design. Boo. That saved, right? I think so? Okay. This is awesome. I want to do big screen? That's... Hmm, that's gonna cut off some stuff. Let's go a bit narrower. How's this? I can work with this. Can you work with this? Um, load or generate a level. Play the story. Health 4 out of 8. Is this at the beginning? I sure hope it's at the beginning. I don't want to reset stuff. Let me get the mouse cursor out of the way. Yay! This is at the tutorial. Okay. Here we go. Here's Super Bugman. Move with the arrow keys. We're not going to do that. Because I'm using a controller. I'm surprised the controller still works. Then we can pick up stuff. We can throw stuff. This frame rate is horrible. Look how slow I move. Let's see, and then we got our schematics, which I don't remember any of these. So, let me start the critique of first thing. It push it push Z to jump. So I re I've remapped my controller. I push the X button. That's not push Z to jump. So, the messages are not correct. They need to match the actual controls. Isn't that cool? But they kind of work okay if you guess correctly. Okay. One thing you'll notice is, um, so with the assets, they're all kind of samey. That's because the sprite sheet isn't very big. But uh, I wanted to have it so that every level uses a different sprite sheet. And uh, one thing I love is um, the little objects. So like the bubbles of him breathing, or breathing, breathe underwater, or whatever. It just spams a screen with all the particle effects. That's what I'm trying to say. Man, I forgot about this. This is a cool item. It just kind of does its thing. There are puzzles. This puzzle, like, it confuses a lot of people. You're like, ah, oh, it doesn't work. But you have to put it, like, up there. And then you can push that. See, that's another thing with all the, the puzzles I made. They... I know how to solve them, but an average viewer isn't. Um, this little bug, it's kind of hard to see. Do arrow key. This little bug. Like this, that was an experiment with some very basic AI. These bugs, they fly around and then on these grasses, they they can plant the grass and that's how you get onions when the grass is fully grown. And then uh, on the grass too, then they'll multiply. And so you can get like a whole bunch of bugs swarming the area. But you know what? The average player doesn't give a crap about any of that. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm just gonna like jump and attack enemies and that's all there is to this game but there's not I put in a bunch of stuff into this game that no one sees which cracks me up and then we get to yeah okay so I can move the mouse with this then I can hold the trigger boom I made a bomb awesome another confusing thing about this is you can click and drag to build I just blew myself up so over here you place the blocks then you can click and drag over them and that's how you build stuff so like on this screen the here's a drill a bomb bomb this tells you 
all the spots you need to put blocks in, then you click and drag over. Like, I know how it works. Average viewer does not know how it works. So I had to make this tutorial level, which was still pretty not intuitive. This tutorial does say everything you need to know to play the game. And even glitches and bugs like this. Like, this bug I had never fixed. So I was like, oh, it's now part of the game. Uh, these bots... Like, there's so much like crafting and AI in this game, but no one knows because it's not intuitive. It's not really advertised as part of the game. It's not critical to the game. It's just more like a playground rather than a game. And there we go. We have unlocked World 1 and the main hub. And this game does auto-save your progress. Yeah, look at this map. Isn't this cool looking? It's like, what the heck is going on here? Alright. So what we'll do... We will save and quit. There we go, save and quit. Because I want to go over this menu real quick. You have a load or generate a level. So you can just kind of jump to other levels as you need. Oh, jeez. Alright. Um... There's also the Endless Chaos levels, which, uh, they're procedurally generated, and I think it's a really cool effect. The thing is, though, let me bring up the Steam page. Under Achievements... Oh, here we go. Okay. So this achievement pops up as soon as you start the game. So you buy the game, you start it up, you get this achievement. So 93.1% of the people that bought the game actually started it up, and the other 7%... It's sitting in their library, and it's never going to be opened. And then here we go with uh, Baby's First Challenge, Reach Chaos Challenge 1. This is what I'm talking about. 19% of the players actually played the Chaos Mode, this procedurally generated mode. And this mode is kind of neat, but I, it's, it's a thing. What it does is it grabs random assets, and it builds the level using those assets and uh, speaking about the assets so I made everything in this game um, I did it with zero <sighs> zero dollar investment it was only time investment I spent eight years developing this game and uh, but all the assets you see the graphics the music uh, sound effects I did all that. Uh, the crafted tester, that's... I don't know if that is tied into... Well, whatever. Okay, so, create a world. Like, 13% of players uh, played from the the world editor. This is, this is not the world editor. <clears throat> this is the world editor. So I made... All the levels using this world editor and of course I built that too um, but what you can do you can make your levels and where is the here's all the tools this is not intuitive uh, even though I have the instructions pasted up in the corner you need to configure all these options like the the name of the file and then what assets you want to use I think yeah so you can click and select what asset so you don't have to just kind of guess at the file names because none of these are intuitive. And when you confirm, yay, it's changed this asset. Choose pen. Here we go. Here's the sprite sheet. So this is what I'm talking about. These are all the assets in the uh, for each world. And there's only 99 assets to build a world. And that's why a lot of the worlds look plain. So, world editor, you create a world and then play it. 13% of the people. Like, that's... Most of the people that played the game didn't even use the world editor. Like, that's concerning. So, just by looking through these achievements... Like, I, I, I haven't even done this one. The Chaos Challenge 1000. Never done it. <laughs> but 5% of the people have. 
I don't know how they did that, but yeah. So, long story short, a lot of people actually started up the game. Not many actually use the other modes of the game. Because I'm just going to play through the story. Let's get to it. All these doors are other characters you can unlock. Saved a level. Personal best. Two seconds. We're going to... We've completed the intro. What the heck? These robots are going to, like, run out of power. Anyway. Uh, world 1. Here we go. All the doors are locked. Notice how the doors are all half height. <laughs> That's because the sprite sheet is, I think, 16 by 16. So this level, this was the first level I made for the game and even during prototyping. Let's see, the interface. We got a score. The score is uh, saved across all game modes, I believe. And since this has a little bit of progress, I'm not exactly starting from square one. But, I mean, so this is how I play the game. It's like, oh, you pick up stuff and you place it. How other people play the game, even during testing, they just run through and um, get things done as fast as possible. They're like, oh, okay. Let's, uh, let's beat this game quickly. The second point is, look how big these levels are. These levels are massive. And that's not a good thing. So, the consensus from players was that the levels are needing to be shorter. That probably would have helped with performance, too, honestly. And these p puzzles, they're stretched out and kind of big. That's not good, either. Yeah, back in 2018, when I released this, I was playing it on stream. I had, uh... I was working with another streamer, Only Hollis. See, you can't even fall correctly. Alright. Do not remember how to get through any of these areas, which is cool. Oops. <laughs> Did he s I don't know if you saw that, but I picked up and carried the score. Yay for bugs. Yeah, so there you go. So there's a glitch. This is where you have to craft a bomb, and then this is where I get blown up. Like, watch the lag on this. This is pretty cool. Another thing is... <laughs> yeah, let's purposely just clog down the game. Um, the text is tiny. Even the sprites are tiny. And I hate to say it, but Bugman moves a little bit slow. I coded Bugman to be um, like uh, Mario in the original Super Mario game. Uh, the stomp ability, you can... Uh, oh, I need a thing. The stomp ability, as long as you're falling down, it counts as a stomp state. Another critique was the attack. So, if I can get to a good spot and show you. Here's the idle state, and then here's the attack state. See, he's kicking, but... It's not that obvious it's an attack state. So this game, I mentioned before, I spent eight years on it. It's all made in C++. And there's a lot easier ways I could have done this. Because um, after I made it, I started getting into Python. You see like the background and all the sprites and assets and like how repetitive they are, and then we go to World 2, which loads a whole new set of assets. Personal best, 3 minutes 18. Yeah, this is a sketch level? Oh boy, I don't remember how to get through here. Yeah, this was themed like a... like you're playing on a desk. So there's graph paper and drawings. See, the thing is, I have a bad memory. I don't even remember how I designed these. Uh, oh! Oh, panic. 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 Okay. 
This game has a mode where the difficulty is you die in one hit. And I was able to speed run this and uh, this whole game under an hour on the hardest difficulty. I couldn't do that these days, no matter how hard I tried. That's another thing about this. The design of the level, like, what, where do I go? Like this part right here, I remember it being very difficult because on the hardest difficulty, one hit you die, look, I would just die. Yeah, so designing blue on blue, that's a good design decision, isn't it? Because I can't even see what's going on here. When I first released this game, I was like super confident, hey, I'm going to charge 20 bucks for it. I think I sold two copies at that price. And then uh, there was a comment like, hey, this needs to go on sale. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I'll put it on sale. And then I permanently lowered the price to $5. And then for the holidays, I'll like lower it to like 75% off. Okay, so this level is about done. Yes. Locked World 3, and it took seven and a half minutes. Look at this overlap. All right. Planet. Okay, this level. I really like this level because it's themed after... The original Metroid. So this is, uh, you've... Oh yeah, I recognize this. You've gone down where you've killed Mother Brain. Well, in Metroid. And then uh, you're kind of backtracking. That sentry is, like, placed perfectly. How did I do this? With, like, getting hit only once. And you're dead. Ridiculous. I didn't copy it exactly, obviously. But... I should say it's inspired by. Oh, jeez. Especially since, like, the NES sprites, I mean, they're, I think they're the same size, but the screen size of this is, uh, larger screen size, same size sprites, you can see more, and so the, everything doesn't really look good with the two different scales. How much of this am I going to play? <laughs> I'm on level 3 and I'm already starting to get tired of it. That's good, right? So like an hour of play? Hmm. These long stretches of hallway, that is not good level design. I mean it works in the original Metroid, but not on this. I designed this as kind of a Metroidvania, which you know, Metroid level, but... <laughs> so in order to get to one area, you need an item from a different area. That kind of thing. My biggest fear is this game doesn't work anymore. So in the original Metroid, this is where you would spawn in. If you recognize it. Look, we have a couple bugs floating around, but they're very hard to see because reasons. <laughs> So it's funny, even though back then when I streamed the game, like it, it was about like this. I'd have maybe one, maybe two viewers. <laughs> Not complaining, it's just I was trying to push this hard, but um, I didn't want to spend any money on marketing. I spent $100 on this game, and the $100 was to be able to put it onto Steam. It was up there, and then the total amount of sales I got was only about $300. And that's with zero marketing. Um, there was another streamer, Only Hollis, who thankfully was like into it. Um, he wanted to beta test it, and he did a great job beta testing. He would beta test it live on stream, which was kind of cool. So that got some extra exposure. In his community, it's uh, obviously a lot larger than mine. So, it got the views. I do not know what to do. I'm kind of stuck. Can I go down here? Ah, I can go down here. And there is health down here, and that's it. Jeez. Okay, so we're at nine minutes for this level, and... 
I don't think I'm even close to beating it. Right, this is how complicated the stuff these levels get. <laughs> this game is too complicated. I can't even figure out the own puzzles I made. Whatever. This game is hot garbage. Do not buy it. I do not recommend. <laughs> There's a way you can unlock uh, one of the characters early, and that's if you play the demo. The demo has a lot of activity. So, if the game is, well, free, it's going to get a lot of exposure. That's one thing. But, I mean, you put in all this work, why should you give it away for free, right? Unless you have DLC or a microtransaction. Alright. Man! It's not much room! Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Dude. So, I died, and the light is left there. That's awesome. And it warped me back up here dude okay so since I lost the light how do I get through here like I said bad game design right this hallway again try doing this without getting hit one time I'm just running don't knock me into the lava so we did all that work we spent 20 minutes just so oh no just so we can get through here Okay, I'm gonna get shot in the head with the laser. Oh no, I'm not! There we go. I'm gonna get shot in the head with the laser a couple times by the sniper because reasons. So there's like a delay in inputs. And then you, it's only reading so many characters at a time. Or so many button presses at, at a time. You can't hold too many buttons down. I like this area. This area is a little bit better because. It kind of guides you, like there's only one way through it. But... Hey, look at down there. Look at all those snipers. What am I supposed to do with this? So now, what I gotta do is... That? Just watch it delete everything. <laughs> then we get some game lag. My favorite. Oh, these are shortcuts. I see. So, I should probably go ahead and unlock this thing so I don't have to go back down there. It's that same puzzle again! There we go. Move that block. So that timer up at the top is, uh, is just burning my brain. It's like, you've wasted this much time. <laughs> you've wasted this much of your life on this game. You could have done better things with your life. So, do I regret making this game? No! It was an accomplishment. Are there things I would like to change about this game? Absolutely. One thing I'm thinking about doing is remaking it in Python, but... Actually, no, not re... Remake is a bad word. Because this game, sure, it has issues, but... I shouldn't remake those issues, you know? Like, I can remaster the game. How about that? That's a better word. I can remaster it in Python. And then, uh... I bet you could... I bet you it would be a lot friendlier in a Python environment. Hey! I unlocked a new character! Awesome! It is kind of refreshing after playing a 30 minute level to do like a, a minute and a half, uh, what's this? <laughs> okay. Uh, to play a minute and a half boss fight. I wish these lights were bigger. Because there's some of these leaps of faith. Like, where am I supposed to jump to? Ah, okay. I think they're safe. Here, we'll just do this. Alright. Like, you make the jump in Leap of Faith, and then you're, like, uh, caught somehow, magically? Like, I say that, but then... Then there may be just this spot where that doesn't happen. Then all we got to do is door. There's world five. Well, world four done. So that took six minutes, 23 seconds. 
How did that compare with the last world? That took 30 minutes. Oh, what? Huh. It's like an invisible block. The heck, dude? Yeah, sure enough. Invisible block. <laughs> don't but feel like that invisible block. I don't I don't like that invisible block anymore. The short way. Oh, the lava grew. Okay. Now I gotta take the long way, because I took my time. That's fine. Yep, that's what we're doing the long way. What's up with these invisible blocks? They suck. Is it? Nah, that's easy. That's the easiest jump in the whole game. Bruh. <laughs> if you mess up this next part, you will need to reset the level. Bruh. Bruh. I messed up this part. Alright. This feels more like a troll level than anything else. And then, here. Secret Fire Lake? Oh, jeez. Come on. It said secret! Remember, I used to beat this in an hour. Dang it. Okay, this is a jump. This is a jump, though. I'm not a fan. Jeez. Having played this for four years and coming back to it and not remembering how or any of my design decisions, I mean, that obviously does not work in my favor, but it gives me a better perspective of... Can I pick this up? It gives me a better perspective of how anyone else would play this game. See, how are you supposed to make this jump? Jeez. See, now I can't do it. Let's go. Bruh. Okay, let's reset. <laughs> okay, I need to go. Come over here. I need to pick this up. I'm gonna put it down fast. Jump over. Jump over. And then I'm going to... Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Okay. Okay. I made it. What? Dude. I can't make this jump. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Oh, unless this is... I have to come back. Okay. Well, I cleared out that area. Dude, look at the bubbles. Look at the bubbles. So many bubbles. Why do I have so many bubbles here? That's a neat effect, though. I like that. Okay, so how far down is this? This is another bad design. So, like, being just the long stretches where the player doesn't actually do anything, that's not good. There's nothing over here. Cool. Uh-oh. You're kidding, right? You're kidding, right? Let me do this. Again, another long fall where you can't do anything. There shouldn't be these long gaps where you're just like holding a button. Yeah, this is fine. Let me make that. Dude, let me make that. How much damage does this do? I did like four? I guess that opens up a door? Alright, let's see here. I just need to go as fast as I can. Two, one, zero. That's awesome. I don't see how I was supposed to do that. You know? Don't tell me I gotta reset the level. Like, I will rage quit this game. Whatever. So am I stuck now just because I messed up the bomb? I couldn't... I couldn't complete the game. I wanted to complete the game. I couldn't. That's awesome. Um, what are my stats? So... Here are my stats. Uh, what's this load or generate level? So I can jump to any world I made previously. Uh, what's this? So I can choose my two... 
characters. One unlocks. <laughs> that one crashed. What a way to go. Yes. Yes, what a way to go. Awesome.